Hello and welcome to the Critic Uculus. Today we are in Empire Sin once again, and this video is all about Make It Count. Make It Count being the brand new DLC, of course, that's just been released for Empire Sin. It's been long awaited and it is finally here. So in this video, I want to talk to you about everything that we actually get with this DLC. Is it actually worth the money? It will retail at around £10 in the store at the moment. You can get a little bit of a discount if you already have a Game Pass. You could, of course, just buy the Expansion Pass for Empire of Sin, which is uh, £20. That will include this DLC yeah, and a future DLC coming out as well. But for £10, what actually do you get? Well, for one, you get this rather groovy boss. Maxim Zalnek, he is the brand new boss uh, within Empire Sin, and well does he come with a world of good abilities. His Empire abilities are probably second to none in the game. Combat-wise, he may not be the best, but he sure as hell makes up for it for his boss ability, which could possibly be the most powerful boss ability in a game, putting Daniel McGee's Jackson's to shame. It is so good. Honestly, it's been a lot of fun playing a game as this boss, and he is possibly... He, nah, he is my favorite boss within the game right now. Honestly, just to have a new boss to play the game with, um, be it one you're actually playing with or you happen to see in your game if you're playing against someone else, uh, playing as someone else, it's just so nice to actually see a new face on the screen. And with him, you actually get five additional gangsters. And here is the first one we are going to look at with a marksmanship of 85 and a defense bonus of 25. It's an absolute tank. Give her a half decent rifle and just watch those bodies fall down. Now this one has a lightning carbine and a very nice looking revolver as well. And this one also comes with the much coveted ability of Hair Trigger. I love Hair Trigger on my gangsters. I will hire as many gangsters as possible with Hair Trigger because basically when one of your, uh, your gangsters gets a low health, people with Hair Trigger go absolutely ham and just start shooting up the joint. Um, sometimes they can kill two or three people uh, in those fights as well. So very much like this. Now, all the gangsters released in this DLC are fixes, and this one will cost you $6,000. Honestly, it's not that bad, and only 260 notoriety to hire. The next fixer we get in the DLC is Rachel. She will cost you 9000 with a notoriety need of 310 a little bit more costly. I actually haven't managed to play as her too many times because every single game uh, it seems to be every other boss likes to hire her um, she's pretty good she has a marksmanship of 95 which is just pretty amazing and a defense bonus of 28 however she only has a movement of five so make sure you give her a bloody good rifle and of course, probably the gangster that's been talked about the most, the fix has been talked about the most so far, because she's appeared in a lot of the streams that Empire of Sin have done themselves, is Ma the Pillar Miller. Now, Ma actually has her own, um, her own mission within the game as well. It's a pretty nice little mission as well. A few of the other um, gangsters are supposed to have their own missions as well, so it'd be quite nice to see just how they actually unfold. I think one of the best things about this DLC is the extra missions that we that we are getting the in-game events we are getting because of the DLC as well it's just nice to see the gameplay really mixing it up and you can actually pick Ma up for as little as 10 notoriety only costing you 3000 it's kind of mad you get 75 marksmen with her as well she comes with a very nice carbine it's the lightning carbine it looks just basic <laughs> Um, but considering the start of the game, everyone has very low health. She does seem to kill them very easily. Quite often a crit chance as well. Um, it's a very nice gun. Oh, and I forgot to mention she also has a defense bonus of 35. This woman 
is not going down easily. Now, all the fixers have their own uh, skill tree line as well. It's all the same. However, some of them uh, already have pre-learned moves. But if you get Ma, you get to pick from the very beginning. And the first two you get to choose from is Snapshot or Crow's Feet. Now, Crow's Feet works really well. It's kind of like a on-field booby trap that the other uh, AI will walk into. After that, you can um, choose Poison Crow's Feet, and of course, that will inflict poison on your enemies as well, or Bide Your Time. Now, that's an interesting one. Now, if you do use Bide Your Time, you'll increase your defense bonus by 10 when in cover. It makes you immune to crit hits, and it boosts your initiative and marksman by 30 until the end of next round. With easy pickings, your attack deal an extra 10% damage um, if your target is stunned or knocked out. Tier 3, we have piercing rounds. It requires a rifle or a sniper rifle. And your shot will penetrate through any obstacles or targets in its path up to 15 meters. Uh, the attack deals weapon damage and ignores any armor. After that, we have two more traps. We have booby trap and we have poison booby trap. Um, and it, it does exactly what it says. You put basically another trap down. That's on top of the crow's feet that you can put down as well. And of course, the AI will walk into it, damaging themselves. I quite like this. Uh, it's actually really fun to play with these characters, especially if you have multiple fixes on the field. Um, so definitely look at trying these out. Like I said, when you pick up Ma, you get to choose for yourself, um, you know, the order in which you pick these up. Or of course, you could pick up Steady Watch, which means if you put your character into Overwatch, that Overwatch can trigger twice. And Field of Fire is basically an extreme version of Overwatch. Anyone that moves, does anything, sneezes uh, while you're looking and you will shoot them. But we actually still have two more fixes. So the first one we have Ada, who costs 12,000. So we're getting very expensive now. These are the higher up ones. This one is 530 notoriety. Again, a marksman of 95 though, but a defense bonus, a defense bonus of 45. Now, this is probably because she comes with tier two body armor, uncommon body armor. Um, that probably bumps it up quite a bit, but she does have a good base defense there. Um, considering you're buying her with that body armor, you'll also get a free um, med kit as well. And did I fail to mention her initiative is 86? Yeah, it's probably true that this uh, Ada, she is going to be attacking first. However, Ada does have a few little problems. First of all, uh, she absolutely hates Frederick. If she sees him or gets left alone with him, she's going to kill him. The same with Gibby. She absolutely hates Gibby as well. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. Um, but she does have hair trigger. I absolutely love hair trigger. Therefore, a bit of a redeeming feature there. Now, I do have one question I haven't actually been able to figure out just yet. Give me a few, few more days of actually playing a game and we will figure it out. But... It is said that the fixers can fix a broken relationship. So if you try and hire a gangster that someone else doesn't like, um, if you actually have a gangster, just once throughout your playthrough, your fixer will fix that relationship, meaning you can hire a gangster that your gangster does not like. So that's kind of interesting. Whether it works with Ada or not, in other words, allowing you to hire Gibby, I don't know, but it's, it's an interesting one. And of course, the best fixer of them all is Dixie Chan. Now, he costs 15,000 up front and notoriety. You're going to have to have 620. It's going to be a late game soldier for you, that's for sure. Does have a marksman of 100 and an initiative of 70. Two, which is pretty good, comes with blue body armor, which is always very nice, and also a lightning carbine rare weapon as well. So when you buy this gangster, he's pretty much fully kitted out. Now, as well as the gangsters and the boss, we also get a brand new racket. That racket is Lone Sharks. 
and loan sharks can make you a lot of money in this game they also are the most expensive racket pick up they do have unique upgrades however as well to make them even better and honestly i think having a brand new racket uh, is just a really nice addition to the game and something that i was looking forward to seeing more extra rackets put in the game as it you know the game continues to grow I think a nice little touch about the Lone Sharks is that as you can see we're actually inside a Lone Shark right now and Lone Sharks basically are all front so in the front you actually have some kind of restaurant and then if you jump into the back you will see uh, this is where the business the real business actually happens I think that's a really nice little touch um, so it actually makes um, the Lone Sharks worth exploring and the more you the more loan sharks you'll get you'll realize that it's not always the same type of restaurant either and of course i completely forgot to show you the actual boss ability uh, the thing that makes it so overpowered is that you get to summon two bodyguards it's called bolster your ranks and you can summon them anytime you want it basically you only have to do three kills in order for it to recharge so it's a very very small recharge um on it and the two the two bodyguards that pop up are very strong. Uh, they hit very hard. They only have 70-ish health. Um, but like I said, you can use this um, multiple times within one fight. And personally, I just think it's very overpowered because you can use it to distract enemies and ultimately win your fights. It saves you money early game as well because you don't have to hire uh, a gangster immediately at the start of the game also i ran into this now i'm not 100 percent sure if this event is because of the dlc or because of the basic update but i just thought it was a really nice event to have trigger i lost this gangster earlier in the day and hey presto he came back to life now i actually saw this live on stream happen as well um i wasn't expecting it to happen in my playthrough especially the first playthrough i picked up but I think it's a really nice little little touch event that's uh, that's been added. And if you're anything like me, you're probably going to need this event to trigger two or three times within your playthrough. Fingers crossed this actually happens, although I very much doubt it. But that is it for the end of this video, guys. Personally, I reckon this DLC is an absolute hit totally worth the money plan i think there's a good few hours been added um back into the game because of this also i haven't mentioned but you also get two extra legendary weapons um within this dlc obviously them being the boss weapons you have to complete the the story mission and such in order to get them but they're also another welcomed addition but don't forget to comment your thoughts down below because be very interested to know what you think of this DLC. Haven't actually, you know, picked it up and played it possibly for the first time today. So let me know your thoughts and I'll make sure I do my very best to reply to each and every one of you. And until next time, guys, have a good day and happy gaming.